So I'm going to talk about factor H in a little bit of detail because this is one of the most, most important breaks on the complement system. And I've shown here a pearl necklace with each bead, each pearl numbered. And factor H is like a pearl necklace with pearls from number one to 20. So it's a pearl necklace of 20 pearls. The pearls are not called pearls. They are called SCRs for short consensus repeats or CCM for complement control modules. So that's just the jargon that uh, researchers use. There's 20 and each of them have unique jobs and each of them have a unique function. So that means the first pearl is not like the 20th pearl. The 20th pearl does something different than the first pearl does. And so recognizing that difference was actually important to providing insight into atypical HUS and other complement mediated renal diseases and understanding how factor H can form its shape and whip around has been, under, it's been important to understanding how the disease, how, how, it, how it functions. It has a number of important activities. It helps break down the C3 convertase. It helps inactivate C3B, and it competes with factor B for binding to C3B. And that's called fluid phase regulation. It does the same thing in your kidney on the blood vessel surfaces Act, controlling the activation process of the complement system. So here's factor H and the 20 pearls, and this is a, a number of mutations in persons with atypical HUS and where they lie on factor H. And what you can see is they're pretty much in pearls 16 through 20, with most of them in pearls 19 and 20. And again, that's because that region of factor H has a different function as compared to the other regions. 